so I thought I'd start off this video by showing you guys how I've been curling my hair with hot rollers. If you watched my last video, which was my most recent favorites video, I talk about how I recently switched back to hot rollers after using a curling iron for over a decade. I used to use hot rollers every single day. I talk about exactly why I switch and which ones I use and all of that in that video. So you can check it out. I'll link it below. But in that video, I got a ton of requests to show you guys exactly how I've been curling my hair. I did have my hair curled in that video and a lot of you guys liked it, which made me really happy. And I figured since I'm curling my hair today anyway, I might as well do it on camera since I'm filming and show you guys exactly how I've been using these hot rollers. I don't have anything special to show you guys. I'm not going to use any product, so it's not gonna be super groundbreaking, but I'm just gonna show you how I've been using it this works for me and it might work for you too. So first of all, my hair texture, my natural texture is quite curly. It doesn't look it right now because I did what I call a speed blowout, which is where I blow out my hair straight, but I don't do it really well because I knew I'd be curling my hair. So I'm able to do it a little bit quicker. I'm able to leave it a little bit more damp. Usually it has to be completely dry or else it will spring up into this, which is just kind of, you can see like a random curl that's poked through there. It just, it isn't finished looking. You would need to use a flat iron to make it look polished. And the reason that I'm not going to be using any holding products like hairspray is because I like to extend the time between washes as much as possible and I find that when I use any sort of products in my hair including hairspray it just builds up faster and I don't feel like I can go as long in between washes I have dry hair I don't need to wash it every day or even every other day I can usually go three to four days comfortably without even having to use dry shampoo so I like to make it feel as clean as possible during those days. That's why I don't use product. When I was younger and I was doing this for school, I did use tons of hairspray. So as I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and show you where I would use hairspray if I was going to, if you're someone whose hair doesn't hold texture or curls as much then you'll definitely want to use hairspray for this. This set of hot rollers has three different sizes. They have pink, which are the largest size, purple is medium, and white is small. When I first got it, I tried to use the pink ones on the very back of my head, and I found that it did not work at all. Those pieces looked really ridiculously not curled compared to the other ones. So now I skip the pink ones completely and I just use the purple and the white and that's been working out for me. This is what the rollers look like. So I'm heating them up right now and when they're ready, this dot on this curler right here will turn white. So that's how I'll know that they're ready to go. I usually will plug it in and while it's heating up, I will do my skincare routine and also my face makeup. So my concealer, my foundation, and then I do the rest of my makeup while the curlers are cooling in my hair. And I do prefer these little U-clips as opposed to the claw clips that are easier to use, but pretty much always leaves creases in your hair. So I just prefer these little U-clips. This came with the rollers and that's what I'm gonna use. I start at the center of the front of my hair right here and I do this whole section going all the way down to the very bottom of my hair in the center first. And what I do is I use all purples going down. I did try three purples and then the last two pinks. Again, it didn't work. So now I just use purples all the way back and I use four of them. These particular rollers are said to have cooling tips. They're still warm, but they're not going to scorch you, but you should still be really careful when doing this. So, okay, this is like not, <laughs> my hair is so long. Okay, I bring it all the way to the base. I, I can probably show you this better on one of the side pieces, but you roll it up and I use one of the U-pins to lock it in. After I've done the four that goes down the center, then I have the two sides left. And these I'll probably be able to show you guys a little bit better. So each sections get five curlers. It gets three purples, which are the medium, and two smalls, which are the whites. And that all together will leave us with using all the rollers except the pink ones. I do the top section first, and I'm gonna use a white one for this, which is the small. So yeah, I can show you better here. So you're going to take it all the way down to the tip of your hair, pull it up. and then clip it and we're gonna do this for all of them. I'm gonna do the three mediums in this back section and then do one more small right here by my face. I'm driving, you're smiling, just really doing nothing. That's the thing I like about you. Always, we 
66 and we keep on driving We just do what we wanna do Yeah No, nothing's complicated with you Hey, playing songs Wait for them to cool Alright, it's been about 20 minutes So now I'm going to take my rollers out I'm super excited This is the best part Because you get to see your curls Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And this is what I'm working with. So some of you might like this style as is. I tend to like to finger comb and even brush through these curls. I forgot to mention, but typically if I am going to use hairspray, I will go ahead and do a fine layer over the curls while they're still in, while they're cooling. And then I'll also do one at this point at the very end. But like I said, I'm not using any products on my own hair and I'm just going to use my fingers to separate the curls out, make it look a little bit more natural because they do tend to come out looking really curly cue-ish. Even in middle school, I would brush out my curls completely with a brush. So you can kind of play with it. What I recommend doing is starting with your fingers and moving up to a brush if it's still too much for you. Um, this actually, I feel like looks nice, like finger separated. I might not even do the brush today. It doesn't really seem to need it. It was super easy. I feel like this is way easier than curling your hair with a curling iron. And I feel like the curls last longer. I feel like it's just really pretty. So that's it, super easy. It's just been good to incorporate something like this back into like a mom routine, like just something easier, but that's gonna just make you feel a little something special. I wanted to update you guys on something that I have been asked about a lot lately, and that is where are you guys on the trying to conceive baby number two journey? And I thought I would talk about it because I haven't updated you guys in a couple of months. I did do a couple of cycle vlogs and I did a couple of live pregnancy tests. And then I took a little bit of time off of that because I just needed it for my mental health. I was just feeling really down about it. I still am, I am still not pregnant. So I don't have any good news to share with you guys. The cycle after the last one I showed you guys, we did one last Clomid cycle. I went in at the beginning of that cycle and I had an ultrasound so they could make sure that my ovaries were in good health after doing three cycles in a row of Clomid. I do think that I vlogged a little bit because I thought I was gonna do another cycle vlog and then I just didn't end up doing it. But if I can find that footage, I will put it right here. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I do have the AC on. It is incredibly hot outside, so if you can hear it, I apologize. But today is day two of cycle 16 of trying to conceive baby number two. I just got out of a doctor's appointment. She wanted to just do a a checkup and talk about our options moving forward because at this point we have done 12 cycles trying on our own plus three cycles of Clomid two at 50 milligrams and one at a hundred milligrams with no pregnancy so she wanted to do another vaginal ultrasound to make sure that my ovaries look healthy because Clomid can be very hard on your ovaries it stimulates them to work harder than they would normally work and she wanted to make sure that I didn't have any cyst forming or anything like that everything looks perfect she says she honestly cannot figure out why we're not pregnant yet. Everything on paper looks so good. In addition to that, we have had a healthy baby in the last couple of years. So it just from a medical standpoint, she's kind of at a loss. We should be pregnant by now. Um, and she honestly thinks that we will, if we continue just trying on our own or trying with Clomid, we will end up getting pregnant. We don't have anything really working against us other than it just hasn't happened yet. And, um, you know, sometimes that happens. It is kind of a numbers game. It's not exponential. So it does, it, that is possible. And she thinks that's really the only thing that is a possibility. She did look at my tubes. Everything looks fine. Um, she was kind of like, you know, I would really like to do one more cycle of Clomid at 150 milligrams, which is a higher dose than last time. That is as high as they go, I'm pretty sure. And she said, if you're not pregnant this cycle, I do think you should be referred on to a fertility clinic. If I was someone who had never had a pregnancy or had only ever had miscarriages, 
then the decision to move on to a fertility clinic would be really easy. It would be, you're definitely a candidate, you've tried a long time, you know, you've never had any success, you should absolutely do that. But I'm a little bit worried about jumping the gun because we have had a healthy baby and we do look like everything is normal. I feel like if we just give it a couple more tries, we're gonna end up getting pregnant. But having said that, it's been 15 cycles. So I think what I'm gonna do and kind of what we had decided at the end of this appointment is this cycle I am gonna do 150 milligrams of Clomid, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get an appointment set up for next cycle with a fertility clinic so that they can get started if we don't get pregnant this cycle. There is a part of me that feels almost a sense of relief at the idea of going to a fertility clinic and almost taking the pressure off of us completely and kind of putting it into the hands of science. On the other hand, I really wish we could just conceive on our own. I know everyone does. I know every couple wants to conceive on their own. No one wants to work with a fertility clinic, but I just have a lot of like mixed emotions. I do feel a lot better than I did a few days ago. I was completely devastated at the test. I, I always am, but I think this past cycle was the worst because um, I had done 100 milligrams of Clomid. I had done Clomid three cycles in a row. I just, I had a lot of hope. It, it was a really good cycle and I was just really hopeful. So um, yeah, I'm surprised I feel as good as I do. So that is my day two update of this cycle. I will be taking 150 milligrams of Clomid days five through nine. She also wants me to take baby aspirin every day. That's gonna be new this cycle that we're trying that. So yeah, I'm hopeful, I'm excited. I always am. I always feel a renewed sense of hope. You know, it's a brand new chance, a brand new cycle, brand new egg, and maybe this will be our baby. So fingers crossed, if not, you know, I'll be moving on to a fertility clinic. And it obviously didn't take, we didn't get pregnant again. So we are now currently on cycle 17, trying to conceive baby number two. And we decided to take one cycle and just not try anything at all and just see what happens. So we're not taking any medication. We're not doing anything special and we're just kind of taking a little bit of a mental break, trying to conceive a baby when it doesn't happen during the normal time frame that you expect it to happen it just starts getting so stressful and so heartbreaking and we're both just really worn down emotionally from it it has been really really hard for both of us so i'm now in the second half of the next cycle which is cycle 17 i have ovulated and you know, there's a chance we could be pregnant, but again, we didn't try anything special. Having said that, we didn't do anything special with James. And, you know, I don't know. I have hope, of course. I don't have as much hope this cycle as I have the last few cycles, but we do have a game plan moving forward. We do have an appointment with the fertility clinic during the end of this cycle so that if it doesn't take this cycle, we can move on immediately next cycle and have a game plan ready and in place so that we can do everything we need to do. I don't know what their recommendation is going to be. I don't know if they're gonna to want to try a different fertility drug like letrozole. I don't know if they're going to want to do an IUI or if they're gonna recommend we go straight to IVF. I was told by my doctor that they might wanna do a few extra tests that she was willing to do, but she also said, you know, at this point, you might just wanna find someone in Nashville because we were traveling to Kingsport for all of these appointments and it was getting really hard. And so um, she said, you know, a lot of the testing that I would want to do now, they're probably going to want to do anyway. So you might as well just get started with them. They can do certain things where they put like liquid up your uterus and they can make sure that everything is, you know, that there aren't any weird like cysts or fibroids or I don't know exactly what they're looking for, but there's also a process where they can kind of flush out your tubes and make sure there's nothing wrong there. Um, it's just weird because everything seems to be completely normal with both of us. We just haven't gotten pregnant in 16 cycles. It's just hard. And, you know, I feel so much more appreciative of how James came easily to us. I think if you are someone who has never experienced any form of infertility, you cannot even imagine it because I had friends who were going through infertility and working with fertility clinics when I was trying to conceive James. And I just remember thinking that I understood, like being very empathetic, 
but it is just, it's nothing what you imagine. It's so much more emotionally awful. <laughs> so anyway, otherwise we're doing well. We do have um, the appointment booked. We feel really good about that. We're excited to go in and just get another opinion and have a game plan. It's gonna make us feel really good. We needed this month to just reset. Speaking of needing to reset our emotions from the turmoil of trying to conceive, Alex and I have been doing this new thing that we've been calling intentional date nights. And we're kind of trying to do a little bit of it every single night now, but especially one night a week, we have been putting our phones and computers away where we are not distracted at all and we can just spend time together. Because I think especially for long-term partners or married couples, I think that it's so easy to get in the habit of hanging out together without actually hanging out together. I feel like I'm especially bad with this because I pretty much am always doing two things at once. So if I'm watching a movie with Alex, I'm also playing a game on my phone at the same time, or I am designing a sticker collection on my computer at the same time, or I'm answering emails, or doing some busy work that doesn't really take any brain activity, so I'm still able to focus on the movie, but he has brought it up, you know, that he doesn't feel like I'm hanging out with him. And it's true when your attention is split between a movie that you're watching and whatever else you're doing, you're not intentionally spending time with the person that you're watching that movie with. That's just an example, but we both have been noticing that we've been doing this. And so we decided to put all phones and computers away. We are allowed to watch movies or TV shows during intentional date night, as long as we're watching it together and like we're focused on it, you know? And it just, it's been so nice. So tonight we are actually gonna be cooking a HelloFresh meal together. And then we're going to watch either a Halloween movie or play Mario Kart, or more likely we're gonna do both. We were playing Mario Kart the other night and we were racing each other. And all of a sudden Alex was in first place and I'm like the Mario Kart queen, okay? I beat him 95% of the time, but he was in first place and I was in second and then all the computer characters were behind us and he yelled out, the person to lose this round has to do the next poopy diaper. And I just laughed so hard. I thought that was like such a parent thing <laughs> to bet on, but uh, he lost, so I won. Alex and I have decided we're gonna make a HelloFresh meal tonight. Are you excited? Yep, let's make it. Yep, so this is the one we're gonna make. It's the crispy Parmesan chicken. And these are all of the ingredients, plus the chicken, which is still in the fridge. This portion of the video is sponsored by HelloFresh, which is literally the only reason why I am able to cook anything resembling a real meal. They send you a box with pre-portioned ingredients, which is literally the best part. That means less prep work, less wasted food. You don't have to go to the store. Everything is perfectly portioned for the meal that you're going to be cooking. You can easily switch up your food preferences, your delivery date. You can even skip a week if you want. And they have something for everyone, including vegetarian, low calorie, and family friendly options. Last year in 2019, they donated 2.5 million meals to charity. And this year they're stepping it up even further with the coronavirus crisis. You can go to hellofresh.com and use the code ADL for $80 off across five boxes, plus free shipping with your first box. So again, that is code ADL for $80 off across five boxes and free shipping with your first box. I will have the link and the code below. Thank you so much HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and giving us a delicious date night meal. Here is the finished meal. It looks pretty darn similar to the picture, which is always a good sign. This is the crispy Parmesan chicken with garlic, scallion, couscous, and lemony roasted carrots. And it smells amazing and we are ready to dig into this. Mm-hmm, very good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Delicious. Oh, yeah. so good. 